Hey there, guys. Um, so, I'm back. I'm going to do another philosophical rambling. Uh, I may do another one on Sunday because um, I seem to be coming up with a lot of ideas about what to do for, for uh, these ramblings. So I may do another one um, on Sunday, too, um, and that'll be kind of a, a bonus thing because I've been away for a few weeks and now I'm just starting to um, get back into it. So, um, yep. So I'll be doing that. And then... Um, and then, uh, so I got I got a few things to talk about. I got five things to talk about, and I'm going to get a little bit more specific about thinkers. I'm going to talk about Kant and Aristotle a little bit. If you don't know anything about Kant or Aristotle, I'll link a page to the Wikipedia page, because as we all know, uh, Wikipedia is the supreme and, and uh, final arbitrator of all things that is no, that are needed for, for um, a good life. So anyway, um, the first thing I want to talk about is goodwill, which has to do with Kant, or happiness, Aristotle. Which one is more beneficial for life? Intention versus outcome, also has to do with Kant. Are consequences more important than intentions, also Kant. Um, is Aristotle too subjective? Is Kant too general but objective? Um, so that's kind of saying the goods and bads of Kant and Aristotle. The, um, for Kant, I'm looking at the grounding for metaphysics, grounding for metaphysical concepts or something like that. And Aristotle, I'm looking at Nicomachean, Nicomachean ethics, uh, both of which I've read uh, this semester at college, and I have a decent knowledge of. Um, so let's get started. Um, so Kant argues that um, that a good will is what is necessary for a good life. It doesn't matter if you do things that are good or you um, you intend to do things uh, well or the outcome is good. It matters if you have a good will. That is, if the if what you what propagates you to do these actions is good in of itself. Um, that is to say that what drives you, uh, drives you towards the good. And it doesn't drive you incidentally, it doesn't drive you subsequently or consequently, it just drives you there and you get there um, intentionally um, and on purpose. Um, I think that's a good summary. Obviously it could be wrong. Um, and Aristotle argues that the finest thing in life is happiness. Um, the, the finest thing for Kant is duty. Um, <laughs> duty. Um, but, um, sorry, I couldn't resist. Um, but the highest thing for Kant is duty, and the highest thing for Aristotle is happiness. Um, and so far as duty is concerned, the will, the good will, comes into play, because without this good will, you cannot obtain the right amount of duty. Um, for Aristotle, um, there is no one uh, main thing to reach happiness. Um, he talks about how um, for an athlete, there's so much physical exercise that they need because they're going to a sports event or something. But for the average person, uh, so much exercise would be um, egregious and unnecessary. So for Aristotle, happiness is all about the golden mean. It's all about finding the right requirements for the right situation. Um, so I just kind of want to go into a little bit of a discussion about whether which one is good, which one is bad. Obviously, I could do a whole video on this, but um, I just want to talk about it briefly. Um, it's my opinion that... Um, both have their good points, bad points. Uh, I'm going to start off with a little bit of a cop out, um, but to me, it seems like Kant has a bit of a problem justifying what the will is and what a good will is. Um, Aristotle, however, seems to draw out specific um, observations about uh, what the golden mean would be. Uh, although sometimes, as I may, uh, as I might argue a little bit later in the video, they seem a bit subjective. Um, but Kant seems to have a bit of a problem. Uh, clearly demonstrating why a good will is necessary for a good life. Um, it seems pretty apparent why a good will would be good for uh, a good life um, uh, because it has so much good in it, obviously, because the word good is in there three times, three times, so so obviously it's good. But um, um, this is my thinking pose. Um, I just want to stop saying um, and I want to say instead that I think um, the bet, damn it, the better philosophy here may be Aristotle, because happiness seems to be more of a universal conception of what makes a good life. Whenever I say I want a good life, I say I want to be happy. I do not want to say, I don't say I want to have a good will. I think a good will is part of happiness. So I'm going to side with Aristotle, but only slightly, and I th still think Aristotle has his problems. So I don't think he's perfectly right or anything. Intention versus outcome. This is a big problem in philosophy. Do the intentions matter? Do the outcomes matter? Um, again, I'm going to kind of throw out a cop out. I'm going to say both count. Um, I think if you intend, like, let's take a basic example. A lady, an old lady who is too frail to get across the street by herself. I don't know why she's outside to begin with then. But somehow she made it to the street and um, she wants to get across. 
Now, you are not morally obligated, I'm going to throw out right there, you're not morally obligated to help her because if you are morally obligated to do things um, that help other people, then basically there is no morality to begin with because you're obligated to and so you have to. So there's no morality to begin with. Um, but um, if you intend to help the lady across the street and the outcome is that she gets hit by the car, gets hit by a car with by no fault of your own, is that still a good action because of your intentions or the consequences? But on the other hand, if, if the outcome that you want is for her to get across, uh, if the intention is for her to get uh, to, to get hit by a car, I don't know, maybe you just don't like old ladies, but the outcome is that she does get across, which is the better? Um, and it seems we have a false dichotomy here, uh, or a we have a, certainly have a dichotomy of some sort. Um, but for me, um, I feel like intention and outcome matter. Um, you should intend to have the lady, uh, get the help of the old lady across the street, but you should also want the proverbial good outcome. Um, if you do not want both, you're being inconsistently moral, and you're applying morals in an inconsistent manner. And morals, to me, are, are very much about consistency and being, um, and being consistent in your application or being continuous in your application of your moral principles and taking them to their logical outcome um, whenever practical and moral. Um, so the next one is, are consequences more important than intentions? Which is kind of the questions I just asked. Um, but I guess I'll, I can go over it again. Um, specifically for Kant. For Kant, uh, intentions are more important. If you intended for the lady to get across the street and she ends up getting hit by the car, well, that's no fault of your own, especially if you didn't see the car coming. But Aristotle might argue, on the other hand, that you should have seen, you should have noticed that it was a bad road or that cars tend to go really fast or... Um, something beforehand to give you a better context of the situation. And without that context, your goodwill is basically useless. I mean, what good is a goodwill if you have no context of what makes a situation right or wrong? Um, so it seems to me, again, that consequences and intentions are important. You should also know the context of the situation. Something Kant seems to let go sometimes in his book, uh, Grounding for the Metaphysical of, Con of uh, me Metaphysics of morals. It's a very long title. I apologize. I can't remember the whole thing. Um, now, the problem with Aristotle is that although he draws up specific uh, situations in which the golden mean might help, like with virtue, with virtues of thought, virtues of character, with uh, being magnanimous, with being um, honest, with being with friends, with being with whatever, um, a lot of it seems kind of subjective. Um, it seems like he... Um, uh, it seems like he is... Um, it seems like he's he's just positing certain situations and the the golden mean just happens to be there uh, in some cases. Um, I mean, for the most part, I do like the idea of the golden mean. I think it's a good one. And I think, honestly, a lot of people still try, strive towards the golden mean. Um, I still think a lot of people like to, you know, everything in moderation. Um, that was one of Aristotle's uh, viewpoints uh, that everything should be done in moderation, or or we get that sentiment from him at least. Maybe he didn't he didn't explicitly say this to my knowledge, but I I feel like we get that sentiment from Aristotle and the golden mean. Um, so insofar as the golden mean is concerned, um, I I do like it a lot. I do feel like Aristotle sometimes can be kind of subjective about what is the golden mean and what isn't the golden mean. Um, he even says that you know philosophy isn't an exact science. Kant wants to argue the opposite that that it isn't. Um, Organized, uh, organized thing, and uh, and it, later on, I don't know when, maybe next month when I get more into Nietzsche, I'm going to talk about how he uses psychology to kind of identify why they have these beliefs. Um, very interesting stuff to me. Um, Kant, he seems to have sort of the opposite problem, or sort of a similar problem, or something like that. He um, he is general, but he's uh, with his principles of the categorical imperative. Basically, anything that you can universally apply is good. Anything you cannot universally apply is bad. So, for instance, if everyone lied, no one would believe you, and therefore you couldn't lie. Therefore, lying is an immoral action. Now, I don't necessarily buy that. I think in some cases it's good, like in lying. But like once we get to specifics, like what if you're lying to save a friend? What if everyone lied to save a friend? Well, I guess then no one would. I guess still, it would, no one would believe you. No one would believe that you're telling the truth, and so lying would still be impossible. Maybe. Um, I'd have to think that one more over. But I think lying to save a friend is much more beneficial and much more moral and gives a greater amount of happiness, uh, a la John Stuart Mill, to, um, to your friend. Uh, I'm not saying that I buy the greatest happiness principle for utilitarianism, and I'll get into that later. 
in another video. But um, I do want to say that it's kind of important insofar as morality is concerned. So Kant seems to be kind of general. It seems to be hard for him to apply his categorical imperative to specific things like if you kill yourself but only kill yourself because you seem to have a lack of will to live or your, 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 your life or you don't have a good will. I mean, what if you can't perform the duties, duties that Kant wants you to or, um, or you know, be as objective in your morality as Kant wants you to? It seems to me then your life becomes valueless, even for Kant, and I don't know how Kant could oppose suicide there. Um, there's a good essay by David Hume that I've had that my first philosophy video was on. It's called um, On Matters of Suicide or something like that, and I basically um, talked about it and um, and I basically praised it. I didn't I didn't straightforwardly praise it, but I did like a lot of what it had to say. Um, I think that'll do it for now. Um, only five topics this time, and I actually went over from last time, but that's because we had, I had bigger topics to cover. Um, all right, um, just a heads up: next week is the Agora I/O. I will have a, I will be again linking it in the description, and um, I will be there on Saturday at nine o'clock. I will be talking about incremental agorism. Um, I'm already working on my on my rough draft and revising it, and I should be done with the paper by this weekend, hopefully. Um, and if anyone wants a copy, I'll email you, and I'll only email you if you're actually going to criticize it, give some commentary and stuff. But, um, yep, uh, I think that'll do it for now. Um, I may have another, um, I may have another uh, philosophy, uh, philosophical rambling on Sunday. If not, it will be on Monday. Um, all right, see ya.